Thank you. My name's George. Um, I've been with NLIS for 25 or 26 years. I lost count. Started off with cattle back 26 years ago when everyone said that livestock can't have an EID. That was obviously proven wrong. Then 20 years later, they said the same with sheep. And now it's just become um, a factor of life and livestock all around the world are now using, now using EID. Um, I've answered some of your Q&As. I'll go back to a few of them. Um, so I'll go through the NLIS database and we'll talk about, I'll talk about the NLIS database, how to get onto it, how to use it, run some reports, um, do a transfer and show you how to use or access the ENVD. So the best way to get to the NLIS is go to mymla.com.au or just mla.com and I've logged in to mymla. Then click on, you click on My Malay, you get to this screen. And I'm going to log in using My Malay. Click on that. Takes you to your My Malay page. We'll log into My Malay. It's the best way to do it. So My Malay has been around for a few years now. MLA received many complaints saying there were way too many um, passwords and IDs, one for MSA, LPA, NLIS, um, I think called LDL or my feedback. So we created a one portal system. So from here, I can access any of these things, LPA, NLIS, my feedback or NVDs. So today we'll go to NLIS. And some people have more than one account. I've got three separate accounts. Today I'm going to log into my producer account, which is this test pod. I have already linked it. So I'll click on login. And now I'll go into my NLIS page. And this is a very typical, well, this is a producer homepage. So for all of you on the call, your producer homepage. And the first thing you'll see is I'm working with cattle. I can change that to work with goats individual. We're gonna be talking about EID. So we click on goat individual. And up the top here, there's a help tool, click on help. Now, because this is fairly new <clears throat> fairly new, and we haven't actually got a lot of goat information, you see there's only two goat, tip, goat tips here, tech tips for goats. But if you change it to cattle, that's been around for 25 years and they've been used in EID. So there's a lot of status, a lot of tech tips here for device statuses, how to do all sorts of things on the system. We will be adding a lot more into the goat area. So for the time being, there's only a couple. So we'll go back up here to this home page up here, up the top left, click on home. And again, back to our home page. When we have to take the system down for any reason, and we did on the weekend, we'll have a banner up the top saying, you know, the system will be down on such and such days. One thing I do, I click on this hide header up on the top right hand side. Just gives you more screen to play with. I'm getting old and having to wear thick glasses now, so I need as much screen size as I can get. So I want to work with goats and then a drop down menu. So working with goat individual, what do I want to do today? There's three areas to so the blue heading account management. That's if you want to add, if you start to buy sheep and you want to add that as a species, you can change the species and add sheep, individual. Then there's this notify the database of this blue heading with these. This is what you do to the system. In other words, you're changing data. Things like moving livestock onto or off your property, send animals to, to deceased, give animals a status. So this is what you do to the database. And then there's your reports. Today, we'll go through and do two things. We'll move some um, goats onto the property. So we're going to this one here, livestock moved onto my property. Click on that one. Then go. And there's two ways to do it. If you're using software, you'd use the bottom one, but we're going to do things on the screen. And a large majority of our cattle and sheep producers currently use the screen version. So we do this here, type in the details manually on the screen. Pretty simple, you've got six boxes. 
This is where you type in your tag numbers. So your electronic numbers and I've got some here already lined up. So these are the electronic tag numbers. So go on add user scanner, scan the tags and use a scanner to plug into my computer or you can Bluetooth most of them. And these are the tag numbers. And later on, I'll show you if you want to do it manually. But you could do it manually here too. That is, if you eyeball the tag, you can type in the visual number. I'll go through that a bit later. So there's this the tags. Where are they coming from? Moving them to, sorry. They're coming to my QDZZ. So these are properties linked to my account. So this is the last I've moved onto my property. So these are from my property, QDZZ. Where are they coming from? And we'll use this one, QBZZ. We'll do an MVD number of 9587654321. Animals are moved today. And there's 35 animals. Now, in this list here, there's only 30 tags. I will put 35 because in that initial period, um, as John said, from the 1st of January next year, we have to tag all newborns. So these are discrepancies. So there's 35 animals, 30 in the list. You click continue and it's confirming. Are you moving them to this property? From this property? With this one weighable number on this date, with this number ahead. And there's a list of some of the tags. You go next page, next page. There's a list of the tags. We click send. And it's now sent it to the database. The database now received it and given us a receipt number. They've so given us these, these numbers 7980, 85, 86 given us a few uploads. Because I put that 35 head in, it gives us a, a counterbalance saying, well, you've, you've sent us some tags and you've also told us there's more tags than you had, more animals in the upload than you had. So we click on view my transaction history and it's going to show us whether there was any issues. So what's uploaded today? We continue. So this is showing me what has happened today. We see that these are the tags we just uploaded. That were the three numbers. And there's an error. So we click on the error. And it's going to tell us that one device, this device is already on the pick. So I ran this this morning and I transferred this animal so I could show you this error. So although I scanned the 30, 29 haven't been transferred, one was already transferred. And this typically happens we know in cattle and sheep, because an animal might come near the reader that's already on the property. Uh, they usually bring um, you know, an old cow up on the um, up on the property, so the younger cows can come on. So they've scanned this extra tag, and we've come up with a warning. In this case here, we've come up with an error saying we can't move this animal onto your property one out of the whole lot, but we can move the rest. So we've now got an error message saying the device is ready here, but only one. So we click close and we click on back home. That's that's the um, process that you must do. So legislation, when you're receiving livestock, going forward. So moving animals onto your property. Some of the questions in the Q&A are, well, what if you buy from a sale yard? What if you buy from something like Oxus Plus, Facebook Marketplace? Well, sale yards will do the transfer, but all the online auctions won't. So you'll have to do it yourself. It's a common question we get and a common issue we, we discover at audits. People don't do the transfers. They think, oh, but it was an auction. Auctions plus marketplace aren't considered to be auctions. So how do we know what got transferred? And this is the next part of it. We click on, I want to, we're going to run reports now. Look at the view devices on my property. We'll click that report. And don't be afraid to play with these reports. They're, you can't break the system. 
although we have had issues the last couple of days, we've made some major upgrades. And every time you do any major upgrades on computers, things don't, don't always go to plan, but things are working well now. So we're going to go to, so I go back here. View devices on my property. Now we're looking at all the animals that are on the property. Oh, so I've transferred onto the property. Looking at goats. I want to see what was transferred today. Nothing was found on QBZZ. Now we use the other property, QDZZ. What was transferred today? 29. So in that list, there were 29 tags. There were, there were 20, there were 30 tags in that list. 29 were transferred, one wasn't. So if we change this back and say, okay, what's been transferred in the last month? The number's 30 now. So we can sort by movement date. And we see this one is the 7th of the 4th. So that's the one I did earlier with a different date, just to show you that you can run these reports. They're pretty easy to run, pretty quick. That's for, uh, small numbers, 30 goats. So basic movements confirm that's been done. So if you're buying through a sale yard, or if you're buying through someone who said they're going to do the transfer for you, or even if you do the transfer, log in and have a look. It's very, very simple. After you've done the transfer, pretty simple. You go to run reports, and these are all the different types of reports you can run. So the livestock moved onto my property. And if you're selling, you want to make sure have they moved off. So livestock transferred off my property. And that's the BZZ, the 2222. Double two, double two. And we moved those 29 off there today. There's the 29. Yeah. And we moved one off earlier in the week. There's the 30. So I can identify 30 moved off this property. So you can feel comfort that, yes, he sent them to the yards or the abattoir and they've gone off. The other report that's very useful are devices purchased. So this report here, devices purchased. From your drop down, you want to see all the animals that, so all the tags that you purchased for QBZZ2222 this month. Fifty. Excuse me. So, fifty tags have been purchased for this pick QBZZ two 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 two. That's the prop they're on. That's the microchip number. That's the number typed on the outside of the tag. Now it's A. That's a company brand. K is the code that identifies this as a goat. S and T are for sheep, breeder and post breeder. B and E for cattle. So we know this is a goat tag. Again, in the Q&A, there were three questions about, can I use my sheep tags for my goat? The answer is no, because we identify K as a goat tag. And if we look over here at species, you see so in species, goats. If I take this back and open it up to all species. So just change the species to, to all, taking it back to the beginning of the year. And there's, as you can see, 2,050 tags that I have purchased that are all species. So I'll just have a look. I know this is a goat specific seminar, a webinar, but this is a showing us that we can have all species here and look at the goat species column. Then it will change down to sheep. And the difference in sheep codes is, as you can see, it's S is the middle letter. S identifies as a sheep animal, or the, the tag is for sheep. And we scroll down a lot further, we see that the B is for cattle, E, B, W. So the W is the year the tag was made. E is the company that made the tag, but B means it's a cattle tag. So that's why we have three different types of tags and the tags are made and they go through rigorous testing. Uh, Elizabeth's also uh, works with a lot of the tag manufacturers to get them over the line to become accredited or not accredited, depending on whether they meet all the standards and criteria 
for that species. So for sheep, they have to be sheep, spe sheep specific. <clears throat> I need to raise that because there were, there were several questions about can I use type of tag? Well, the answer is no because of that reason. So go back home. There we go again. I want to livestock transferred onto my property. There we go. Type in the details. This time I've eyeballed the tag numbers and have the outside tag number that's printed on the outside. <clears throat> Got up there. I'll use my, my iPhone, get a, get a photo of it, come back and zoom that out. They're coming onto my triple three property or double three, double three property. Come off this property. Transit whiteboard number. They moved today and there were only three animals. So you continue. Again, confirmation. Do you want to do this? There's the three tags. So the first part of a tag, by the way, is the pick that Uber, the tag was issued to. And then the AKU are the codes. The A is the company that made the tag. K is a go tag. And the U is a tag, the year the tag was made. And the last numbers are random numbers. You can they usually start off with 0001 and go up to whatever number. You can start that tag, range off anything you want. Hit send. Again, we've got an ID number. We can view the history of what we've done today. This is today, you go back as far back as you want. We just want to look at what we did today, just now, continue. And this time here, we've got complete status. So they're the three files that this one upload creates. It's got the four, then it's broken up into two, and they're all complete. So the file went through. Go quickly again, go back home. I want to view what's happened. So I go back to view device on my property. Also transfer onto my property. Change this to three. And we had 29 before. And just got three more now, so now it's 32. So confirm that we've done that three upload. That's three tags. And there they are there. It's taught by the NVD number. So very simple. Play with these reports. They're pretty simple to use, pretty easy to use. You don't need to run a lot of them. Devices purchased every time you buy tags, movements on and off. So go back to home. Click on this show header. Then we're back to the home page. So, and the last thing I'll show you is checking ENVD. So we'll hide the header again. Very last function on the first page is you want to view your ENVDs. Click go. So there's nothing done today. If we scroll down, these are NVDs that have been submitted. Again, these are all our test ones. So here's one here, options. I'm going to generate this PDF. So I want to look at what happened in this particular case on the 5th of April, 200 goats. We click generate PDF. And there's that PDF. So these were either created by me or they're coming to me. In this case here, I'm the creator of this ENVD. So that's where to view that these are incoming, as you can see, outgoing. That's the one I created as a seller. This is the one I received as a buyer. Now, if you want to create your own ENVD, when you've logged in to NLIS, but only when you're logged in via my MLA. If you log in directly, it won't work. It only works if you've logged in via my MLA. Up here, create new consignment. I create it from scratch. 
where are they going to? So you can find a place or we can just use, these are the ones I've used before. This is my testing. This is the real live system, by the way. This is the real live database, but just using these properties that I've got access to. So that's where they're coming from, where they're going to, when were they moved, they're moving tomorrow morning. At six o'clock. We want goat. We just want an NVD. We can also include a, a health declaration. Add description. We won't go into too much details, but this they put the number of head, the sex. You know, next, you can ask more questions. Have the last one been owned? Are they eligible to be moved tag free? Have they been fed anything they shouldn't be, etc.? So this just goes on and on. There's several pages. Ask to confirm. You can sign it. I won't do it for now. It takes time, accept terms and conditions, and then you can submit it. So that's that's the process to create an EMVD. Um, if you answer all the questions, it just goes through. You sure you want to submit this? You go yes. And that, because there's a lot of unanswered questions, um, it'll come up with the classic. You've read, understood the terms and conditions. It's all saying that there's any questions I haven't answered. So you just go through the whole process and it fences it off for you, prints it off, or scan it and give it to your driver. So that's the PDF I just did. I kept the same condition as the last time. I didn't answer any questions. That's what I signed. That's how you generate a ENVD. So go back up the top, back to consignments, up the top left. And this is what I've received moving today. There's nothing, so I'm moving it tomorrow. And this one I just created just now, it's moving tomorrow. I didn't say how many head or anything, I simply said goat. So that's why I only got their goat. You can view these. Open them, print them. So that's your ENVD. So you create it from the top and you view it from down here. And the way you access it is via your home page. From your home page, you're to find them for my ENVDs. And that's about it for me. Have a play. Um, it doesn't hurt the system. Firstly, run reports. Moving the animals is pretty simple. Copy paste is the easiest. The most difficult part is if you're buying lots of goats and you have a scanner, the software will work for you. But if you just scan the tags, make sure that you whatever you scan, you're able to put onto your um, computer.